Good morning and welcome to First United Methodist Church's online worship and welcome to my living room. I am in my cozy space and I'll talk about that later in my sermon, but as you can see, my dog is already tired. So um, hopefully he won't sleep through my whole sermon, but he may. And maybe some of you can relate. I have a couple of announcements for you this morning. The first is if you're watching this on November 8th, today at 1 p.m., we are doing our online church, all church gathering. It's a way for us to celebrate the ministry that has happened. It's also a way for us to do the voting that needs to take place during the year. If you're a United Methodist, you know that that's called a charge conference. This year is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be doing it online with a Zoom link. And so if you're able to participate in that, we would love to see you today at 1 p.m. And that Zoom link has been sent out. Um, if you didn't get it, please shoot us an email. We'll make sure that you're able to log on this afternoon for this very important meeting. Another thing I want to let you know that you should be signing up for, if you're a photographer or if you know a photographer or people who work in the wedding industry, we have a wonderful workshop coming up. It is November 14th and 15th, and it is called Love is Colorful, and it's about diversity within photography, and there's actually going to be models uh, here so that you can um, diversify your portfolio. There's going to be other folks talking about what does it mean to have a diverse portfolio and how can you have diverse clients. I want to give a huge thank you to all of you who have been giving during this time. I know that this has been a time that has been unexpected, that it would last so long. Um, we haven't been able to gather other than for our monthly in-person communion gatherings. Um, and so I'm so grateful for those of you who continue to give financially to the church community. I know that this is a difficult time for many. For those of you who are interested in giving in this community, if this is a place that you feel connected to and you want to um, give to the mission of that, um, you can do so by the link that will be below here. Now, I have an exciting announcement. We are going to be participating um, in something called Honest Advent. Um, this is the work of uh, artist and speaker Scott Erickson, a dear friend of mine, who created a book and some images that talk about um, Advent in kind of a, a different way, a way of engaging wonder. Uh, myself and some other pastors have worked together to create an online Advent calendar that goes along with this. We'll be sending out a link for that. And you can also participate every Wednesday. Each one of us um, will be leading a group sort of talking through what do these images mean to you. So be looking for that. That comes out um, and we're starting that November 29th. Now along those lines, if you would like to grab Scott's book um, before that, you can find it on Amazon and maybe even a local bookshop, but it's called Honest Advent and it's by Scott Erickson. Families, we only have a couple more weeks left in the curriculum that we've got before we start the Advent curriculum. So hopefully you're enjoying those. Um, let us know if that's working out for you. We'd love to see the kids' images if they're working through it. We know that your kids are pretty zoomed out. So we hope that this is a helpful addition rather than just another thing you need to do. So let us know. All right, and finally, um, thank you so much for all of you who follow us on our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for all of you who engage um, the Instagram, Facebook, and all of that. For those of you who don't and you want to stay um, updated with everything, you can follow us on First United CM on everything. All right, I think those are all of the announcements. Let's join together now in the call to worship as we join in the liturgy or the work of the people. Hi, my name is Ryan Hicken, for those of you who are not familiar, um, and I am here today for our call to worship. We worship the God who inhabits our world and indwells our lives. We need not look up, uh, up to find God, we need only to look around within ourselves, beyond ourselves, and into the eyes of another. We need not listen for a distant thunder to find God, we need only listen to the music of life, the words of children, the questions of the curious, and the rhythm of a heartbeat. We worship the God who inhabits our world and who indwells our lives. May today's worship help us see God's presence anew. Amen. Be and here in your love. 
here in your love So set a fire down in my soul That I can't contain, that I can't control I want more of you, God I want more of you, God Set a fire down in my soul Good morning. This morning's reading comes to us from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. The coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rushing of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit of God gave them ability. The word of God for the people of God, and all together we say, thanks be to God. Well, good morning again. It is good to be together in worship this morning. A little disclaimer, I have been waiting to record this um, sermon uh, till we had election results. Um, I wanted to make sure to address kind of what was going on and how people were feeling and then we don't have any election results and it's late Thursday evening um, when I'm recording this and um, I wanted to make sure to get the sermon in soon enough that uh, Josie can make sure it became part of the service. So um, we don't know the election results. It'll play into the sermon a little bit later. But let us pray and then we'll jump in. God, as always, I simply ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts gathered here online together would be acceptable because God, you are indeed our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
All right, so today we are in my sort of meditation spot. This is uh, my living room, obviously my, my dog, uh, one of my favorite plants. I have a bit of a black thumb, or as I like to say, a hospice caregiver for plants, but um, I got this as a gift last Christmas when I went um, to have a Thanksgiving dinner with um, some friends and it has grown lovely and so it's right here and then I like to light these candles because um, when I light a candle it's sort of a, a reminder to uh, my senses that I'm actually starting to engage um, a different sort of time I tend to be a really busy running around rushing person and so having these candles sort of set the atmosphere and set the time apart has um, become part of my practice. So in the mornings um, I will walk my dog and then often I will come home, do a quick workout, and then I'll sit in front of these candles and read or late at night um, I'll engage in a meditation here in this space. And I do like to like sit on the ground. There's something about that for me. Um, or I'm in the corner of the couch right here. So um, as we talk today about fire as inspiration, I wanted to share the space that for me is um, the place where a lot of my ideas for sermons come from. This is sort of my inspiring space. So we have been in a series on fire. Um, and as I said last week, it's a little bit um, awkward to talk about fire when it feels like, well, yeah, it feels a little bit like things are on fire. Uh, literally in California, for some of us, we've had the fires going on. And then also things are so chaotic. The joke is actually that 2020 is a dumpster fire. I'm sure you've heard that. But fire isn't anything new. Uh, we've been spending weeks actually uh, looking at how in scripture there are all these images and all these stories where fire is invoked. Fire, this what can be very destructive can also be very creative. We can't cook without fire. A um, person who does any sort of metal work needs fire. A silversmith or blacksmith um, needs fire fire to create. And in fact, if we don't have fire, we aren't able to get by for very long. Fire is important, but fire can be uncomfortable for sure, either because it's too hot or because it can destroy things. It's very quick. Fire is unpredictable sometimes. So let's talk about where we've been and then we'll talk about where we're going. Week one, we talked about this idea of fire is sort of protection. We talked about the Israelites coming out of Egypt, out of slavery, and fire going ahead of them, and how God, in this instance, is uh, the fire imagery is that God goes before us. There isn't anything that we go through that the divine hasn't um, gone before and before us. And even that the fire went between them and the Egyptians, and it reminded us that God can be like fire and that it can be a protection for us. The second week we talked about the story of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, who are placed in the fire and their friend Daniel is um, left outside with this king who has declared that they are gonna be thrown into this pit of fire for not, like for refusing to stop worshiping their God. And so they're put into this pit of fire and then into that, God shows up and it's just reminded that when we are going through the fires of life, we are not alone. I think many of us, feel that right now. And Daniel, even outside of the fire, continues to care for his friends that are in the fire. So often we have people walking with us through the fire and those who are outside of the fire. That has been so important for me during this time of quarantine, during this time of election season, during all this time there, it's been really important to be connected to people. The third week, Lamont shared with us how fire can actually get rid of impurities. Fire is needed to help refine. They say a blacksmith's forge is how they get rid of the impurities of metal. And so sometimes when we go through fires in our life, it gets rid of the non-essential. And then last week, we talked about this really strange story of Elijah as I was once again sitting on the ground because again, I don't know what it is. I just like to sit on the ground, but um, how Elijah is um, having to go and speak to King Ahab, who as uh, you may not remember, but scripture describes King Ahab as the, the one who angered God most. Not a great description. I would not want to be the one who angered God most, but King Ahab's prophets um, and Elijah get in this sort of battle and they have these huge stacks of wood and then the smoke, um, they're trying to create a fire. And, and it's really embarrassing to the other prophets because they um, had, had the God that was supposed to command lightning and they 
that God doesn't show up. Instead, the God of Israel shows up. There's a massive barbecue, and the story really is about how God provides. But it's not just that God provided this big light show. I think sometimes we think God's going to show up in these huge ways. When, if you look at the story, the profound ways that God shows up is in the smaller ways. The fact that Obadiah went before Elijah, so that he's able to talk to King Ahab. He makes a way, and that Elijah himself is given all these gifts inside of himself that he has to utilize and use in order for any of this to be able to happen. So then this week, we talk about a story that we talk about at Pentecost every year. And yes, that was just in May that we heard this story. In quarantine years, it's like, you know, seven years ago. Um, but it was only in May that we heard this story of the fire coming down at Pentecost. Sometimes we need to know that the fires in our life are going to be inspirational for us. If we hadn't gone through the fires, um, sometimes we don't get to the benefits of inspiration. I have a dear friend who talks about how the many artists put themselves through really tough times so that they're able to create a better album or a better piece of art or whatever it might be, which I don't recommend doing. But what they do know is that the creative process often requires people to have gone through something and to create out of the thing that they have gone through. And we know that in our own lives, oftentimes the, the very thing that was our point of pain becomes the thing that we can share out of. Let's talk about this story a little bit. It come is the celebration of what we call Pentecost or the start of the church, the birth of the church is often how it's called. And it's been like the disciples have really gone through fire together. They've, they've seen both the highs of miracles performed. They have seen incredible things happen. They've also seen people going through a lot and then they themselves being inspired after encountering Jesus. And they've, they've really gone through all of that. So it's the highest of the high. They're so excited. They think everything's working out and then the lowest the low the experience of the one that they were following losing his life being gone feeling abandoned that indeed is a fire a difficult fire everything they had hoped in everything they had believed in everything they thought was reality and truth is is changed and switched and flopped and all of a sudden they are left alone and then Jesus shows back up and they have 40 days with him. Well, the story of Pentecost comes after that. See, when Jesus left, Jesus said, I'm not leaving you alone. I'm leaving my spirit with you. And then the story of Pentecost, they're all sort of hanging out in Jerusalem because Jesus has said like, wait in Jerusalem, something is gonna happen. So they're all sort of waiting around in anticipation, the feeling of waiting for those of us engaged in this election waiting. Anticipation, fear. Could things change? Will things remain the same? What are you hopeful for? There is this real sense of sort of anxiety amongst the disciples during this time and unsure. Talk about unsure. Jesus has been around, then been gone, then shown back up. And they have to figure out who they're supposed to be. It's not like Jesus left an instruction manual. He basically said like, go and make disciples of all the world. Good luck. You're going to be great at it. You've got all the gifts and skills you, you need. But they're not sure what that means or what that's supposed to look like. So then this story is one in which the Spirit of God shows up in such a way that everyone around them thinks that they're drunk. Everyone around them thinks they're drunk because they're all of a sudden speaking each other's languages. That's really the miracle, right? They're able to understand people they were never able to understand before. Sometimes when we go through fire, we can understand people in ways that we've never been able to understand before. They use words that make sense. Tonight, when we were engaged in Theology and Tap, somebody shared that they were working through um, having depression and other people in the room were like, oh, um, you know, that's funny, I, I've had depression as well. And there was a language and, and sort of an understanding that those who had gone through it before could understand in a way that those who had not couldn't. It means something differently. Now, Peter, Peter starts to preach. And Peter actually like yells out the window and explains, hey guys, we're not drunk. And Peter, who used to be so bad with words, right? Peter was the one who always would like jump in quickly with whatever he thought he should say. And oftentimes it was the wrong thing. God, I will, Jesus, I will never forsake you. And then he's the one who denies him three times. He's the one who ends up becoming the rock on which Jesus builds the church. 
he's the one who actually has the right words to say to the point where it says like thousands of people. So now some walked away, but some stayed and many of them began to understand the good news of Jesus. He was so inspired that he became inspiring. Friend, whatever we are going through right now collectively, I'm wondering what are the sparks that we're experiencing? Something is happening. Nearly 70% of America voted this time. Something is happening. Some of it's good, some of it's bad, but all of it can be a spark. A spark for something new, a spark for something different. I hate change. My friend pointed it out recently in me. Even something as silly as buying an Airstream on my own when I always thought it would be a project I would do with a significant, whatever it might be, like I hate change. It's something new. What if it doesn't work out? But I need that spark to change my life because I'm never, ever, I mean, the only way to live a safe life is to not do anything. And so in the midst of all of this, there is this shaking, this changing, this, this rub. And oftentimes we are inspired most by having gone through a fire. So recently I was reading Reader's Digest online. Now, if you are my age or older, you may remember Reader's Digest was the thing that everyone had in their bathroom. Like every grandma had the Reader's Digest in their bathroom. And um, I used to love reading the Reader's Digest in my best friend's grandma's bathroom. For whatever reason, I was looking for something and for I saw the little Reader's Digest. I think I was actually looking for election results and I clicked on this Reader's Digest thing. And the story that came up was a story about a spark that turned into a fire. It's the story of Eric, and I wanna make sure I say his last name right, Catalano. Eric Catalano is a famous tattoo artist, and what makes him so famous is the kind of tattooing that he does, and it involves really a painful story that turns into one that will end up sparking and inspiring others. So Eric's friend had lost his two fingers in a machining accident. He worked um, around machines and he lost the tips of his two fingers. And so he came in and at first he, had, he, he thought his friend was joking. He said, I need you to tattoo two fingernails on for me so that it just looks like I have shorter fingers and I don't kind of feel so odd. And Eric said that he was so used to tattooing people so they would stand out that it felt weird to tattoo people so they would fit in. Um, and at first it felt like a joke, but he's such a good tattoo artist, he was able to create two nails for his friend. And he said as he was working on it, the atmosphere of the room changed. All of a sudden people were sort of gasping at how lifelike it was and people took photos and he shared that and it actually went viral. And then people started showing up that had all kinds of ailments, people who had experienced um, the loss of limbs, different things um, by cancer. And he was able to sort of change uh, the way things looked by his tattoo skills. What he decided to do was that he was going to um, have Wellness Wednesdays where he really wanted to tattoo folks, um, people who had had vasectomies and had had replacements so that the shadow, everything, you know, he was able to tattoo different parts of people's bodies, again, to make them fit in, not stick out. It all started with the pain of his one friend. Now, after that, people really started to buy into this and they didn't want people who had gone through trauma to have to pay for their tattoos. So this GoFundMe project started and so far they've raised $16,000 so the people, he can be paid for his work and people can experience the freedom of not feeling like they stick out anymore. And it all started because of one friend's pain. A little bit of a spark has lit up an entire tattoo community and now there's a lot of other artists who are learning how to do a Wellness Wednesday where they do tattoos for folks who really want to fit in instead of stick out. As I was reading this story, I thought about all the fires that 2020 has contained and how hard it has been. And I also thought about kind of um, in my own journey, those times of fire. I'll tell you that for most of my life, I didn't feel like I fit in. I have so many vast interests and they don't all go together. And a lot of people are like, talk about a Renaissance person. Like I am so curious and interested in so many things. And I was going through a particularly tough time when I started volunteering with a youth group when I was in college. And I tell this story often because it really was life changing and you can either blame or thank 
uh, this kid that was on a retreat with me when um, when I was in college and volunteering with youth group went on retreat and I wasn't able by the way I had just applied for a job at the church and I didn't get it I was applying to be a graphic artist because I thought I wanted to be a graphic artist and I really thought I should get this job did I have any training zero but I was really sure I should get this job and I didn't and I was embarrassed I'd never gotten a job not gotten a job before but I decided to volunteer with this youth group later that would turn into a job and later it turned into a career but it was on this trip that I was sitting with a kid and we were sort of talking through different things. And he said, Sarah, you know what's interesting about you is you have so many different interests that all of us can relate to and all of us wanna to talk to you about God. So you love music and you play guitar so you can hang out with the kids who love music and play guitar. You played sports in high school so you get along with the kids who are more considered jocks, but you're a sorority girl so you get along with the kids that kind of know what it's like to go through the pressures of being popular, but you also love to do arts and crafts so you can hang out with the girls who just wanna craft in the corner. And it was the first time where this thing, this like weird thing in me that wanted to do all the things that had felt like I couldn't find a major and I felt so left out in the world because I couldn't find my thing, found my thing. All my different loves, my passions, they made me relatable. The thing that I thought would keep me separated from everyone in a weird way made me connected to everyone. It took a kid saying that to me and it was after that weekend that I asked my campus minister if she thought I should go into ministry. All because a kid mentioned that they wanted to talk to me about God because I also liked music. That little spark, and yes it was, around a campfire. Friends, I know it feels like we're in the midst of a fire. I know it feels like we're in the midst of change. I know it feels overwhelming. I want us all to take a deep breath. What, what spark could be mauling up in us, not just in, as individuals, but as a people that will be inspiring, not just for ourselves, but those of us around us. See, Peter, the one who didn't have the right words, got the right words and was able to share the love of God. All of us have got something that we can use to share the love of God and share the love just which God is love, and we need to share that right now, especially right now. I wonder what that spark is in you. Let us pray. God, thank you so much for all the places and spaces where we feel your spark. Would you help us to endure the fire and so that we're able to move beyond it? It's in your most precious name that we are for ourselves and even this time of anxiousness. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone, and happy Sunday. Will you join me now in singing Great is Thy Faithfulness?
and stars in their courses above, join with the nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy in that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings Friends, I want to invite you to join us in the benediction. And all that is is a chance for us to bless you today as you are headed out into uh, whatever your day may look like. And we do this practice simply of holding our hands open as a way of saying we are open to the inspiration of what is next. So receive these words. Now, may we go out believing that the Spirit of God is with us and that we're empowered to be inspired and therefore inspire others. And may we have a blessed week no matter what it may contain.